Hello guys, today I have a special friend on my side. He's Grandmaster, he was born in Iran and then emigrated to the United States. And in 2019, he won one of the most important tournaments, the Rilton Cup. In 22 and 21, he wrote a very nice book called Sherlock's Method. And today we want to show you some very interesting position. So welcome, my dear friend, Eljan. Nice Hi. to have you here in Vienna. Hey, thanks for having me, Harold, and I'm glad to be here and sharing some of the insights from the book. Just to mention, I co-authored this with my partner, Sabina Foyser, WGM and 2017 US Women's Champion. And uh, just say something about our collaboration with Sabina, if, it's, if I may. Yeah, that's fine. This is a book that uh, I always said the idea was mine for a long time, but I couldn't really materialize it, put it into a work. So the way I said, this is a book, it wouldn't have begun Without my idea, it couldn't finish without Sabina. <laughs> so it was a very nice collaboration between us, and uh, we work really well together. And uh, as we go through the book, I'll discuss what touches and what work we've done together. So great teamwork from Sabina and your side. And we should start with this game between two famous guys, Aron Jan and Anand. And in this position, it was Black's turn. Yep. So, um, um, should I talk about the chapters a little bit? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. So the book has three chapters basically where basically, uh, the idea is Sherlock, because I like Sherlock Holmes, oh. <laughs> well, uh, trains his good friend, uh, John Watson for a tournament and John has haven't, uh, John hasn't had so much training for a long time. So this is a book written for people who are going to play after a long time and they feel rusty. They're not really up to their games and they don't feel confident enough. So in the first chapter, he starts with simple ideas. When it's says simple ideas, it doesn't mean the moves are easy. It means that the ideas are simple and there are something that they should come to your mind quickly. Um, chapter two is our end games. We're going we're gonna to get there. And the chapter three, which we, we probably will not cover much of, we just we talk about it, are the complex ideas where someone has trained enough and now he wants to get really deep in his calculation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is chapter one, and I like this game because uh, I was watching these games live, and this is a bliss game between Aronian and Anand, and Aronian just blundered with the move knight e5, and it's very interesting that Anand played this move within seconds. And uh, you want to talk about the blunder? or? <laughs> yes, it looks like, I'm also a little bit rusty, but it looks like that there are some ideas along this diagonal, so... Mm -hmm. Rook takes on yes, e5, yep. e5, pawn has to take, now you take the queen. Yep, deflection. And Bishop takes, Yep. and, and we yep. have a check here, yep. and black um, is, yeah, has a winning six. position. Or, yes. Very close oh, to winning, maybe very there close is to a winning, defense, yes. but, um, well now I don't, we don't want to discuss the end game, but uh, that pawn on e5 is actually works against white, and black's majority on the queen side is very overwhelming. Yeah, four against two, and bishop looks very strong, so strong. Yep. Yep. rook is active. So yes, this was an easy start, but yes, I suppose start. it will going to be harder. Yep. It, it's, it's just a reminder to everyone that you need to be at the top of your easy ideas when you start. Yeah. So this one is a game of Sabina from US Championship. And uh, this was a very good prep. Uh, this is also, we chose this one. We, we have many, ta I'm sure you have many tactics in your games as well. And uh, so do I and Sabina. But this was a choice because it was also the, thanks to a good opening prep from a classical game, uh, which was played only, only a year earlier, Kramnik against Topalov, 2015, uh, where Topalov Play the idea of taking the knight on e5 eventually and uh, give uh, gave white some attack on dark squares but anyways regardless of that uh, we got very deep in this line before the game and uh, we knew there are some tricks and black fell for it uh, which was after knight d7 so this well, is was this the tournament where sabina won the u.s championship she won a year after this year in 2017 okay yes, yeah. she finished fourth she had a still good tournament this one okay. she outperformed her rating so this was a still good tournament That's great. so 97 was a mistake yes and there is a famous trick in this position yeah the deflection which is knight c6 yeah we have this check on e6 and knight c6 
and it cuts the bishop on b7 from defending the knight on d5 so even if the queen moves to defend the pawn on e6 yeah so we let's show if the bishop takes the knight then we have to check yep and yeah, yeah, wins, position yep. wins and if the queen protects the pawn just knight takes d5 yep as, yeah. as played in the game because now knight c7 is also a threat right so black must yes. take back bishop we takes give check king, king gets eight and uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, Sabina didn't play the most accurate way. We showed it in the book. I think queen f3 is the most accurate mm. way in here. It's not easy to win. She obtained a winning position. Then in, in the end, she blundered to a draw. But nevertheless, she played well for, for a while. She obtained a winning endgame just in time pressure. She blundered. Um, but that's another story. Yeah, and this position is a quite nice starting. Okay. Yep. So good preparation from your yes, side, sir. I suppose. Uh, well, both of us, yep. Yeah, <laughs> so this is a very good one if you, we want to spend a little bit more time on. Uh, the idea is easy, the calculation gets a little bit harder. It's a move after the, uh, this black, white, uh -huh. So five, white plays G5 five. and it's black's turn. Uh -huh. So you want to talk a little bit about this one maybe? Okay, maybe there is a weakness on D3. So knight uh -huh. B4 could be an interesting starter. Yep. So... What do we have to calculate, Elshan? So, I don't know if, if, if it happens uh, with your students or not. It happens a lot. They see the pawn is weak on d3. Yes. They see knight b4. Yes. And then they see black plays knight h4, attacks the queen and the bishop on b7, and they stop there. Aha, okay. So, we have so, to go some moves deeper into this position? Yes, yes. So, the idea is simple, which is attacking the d3. Then, a lot of time people say, oh, wait a second, there is knight h4, a double attack, and they stop there. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the problems when I train youngsters and players who want to get better at chess, is that they do not continue their calculation. The moment they see a threat, they stop the line. Yeah, but that, this is always the question, where do we have to stop and where do we have to continue? And that's why we have this position. Yes, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, because in a rapid, uh, uh, again... Uh, a player at the level of MVL, he's world bliss champion after all. Mm -hmm. He uh, he lashed out the move knight b4, knight h4, and uh, he saw the counter, which is very beautiful. Queen takes d3, queen, queen takes, takes d3, knight takes, bishop takes b7, and, we take and he, he saw the forcing line. Rook takes rook, takes, and rook b8. And the point is that the threat of knight takes c1, if you want to show it to with the, with an arrow, knight takes c1 and bishop takes g5 is a very strong threat. So if the bishop goes uh -huh. to e4, e4 yeah. I suppose. Knight takes the bishop. Yes, rook has to take. I mean, he didn't take in the game, but if he takes, then yeah. after bishop takes g5. Yeah, and here we have the double attack. Yep. So... Yeah, and then the game he was playing knight f3 and knight after knight b3, black is so better. Hel healthy up pawn, right? Yes. I mean, up pawn. So if we go to the initial position, I tell my students that where to stop or not, I think the, the point is that we know black is better because white is not very well developed and seems to extend the knot in the best fashion. Knight is on a3, there's a pawn on g5, seems that there are so many weaknesses mm -hmm. so a little bit of intuitively you should feel that there could be something in the position yeah. that's why if you choose some line you should keep going with it so that was the idea to include this uh, in the book yeah and you should not stop the variation if you can take a piece and here you have yeah, so. knight takes on c1 and then bishop takes on g5, g5 yeah. okay very nice yes Okay, Let's now, continue, and here this is, is... This is my game after knight c6, mm -hmm. my opponent played, so I leave this to you. I don't want to talk so good of myself. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, it was a nice win from your side, yes. It was in 2019, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and the, there should be some tricks with d4 and knight d3? Yep. So, d4, okay. A deflection? Uh, it's. I think it's many things at the same time. I think uh, we are... Breaking the blockade, we mm -hmm. are freeing the square, then, and uh, deflection, yeah, m many things, I think. So, my opponent here got dejected, uh, realized that he's losing, but let's look okay, at Okay, he some. was playing queen b8, but what happens if he yeah. 
24, let's say, this move. So knight d3, I would mm -hmm. say. Now the queen has to be careful. Uh -huh. Queen, queen d6. D6 and only move. Yep. And, and then e5. E5, yep. yes. And ooh, this looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clearly winning. Okay. And if you go c takes d4, instead of knight takes d4, after d4, c takes d4. Uh, again, knight d3. Now, if queen d6 runs into e5 again, so yes. if queen b8 now, rook c1. Ah, oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, and bishop d7, then we win so many pieces. <laughs> and you take, and take, and take. And take, yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. That's the, the story, exactly. So, pawn d4, and okay, let's take, should we take a look at the game or sure. I mean, queen b8? It's pretty quick, I mean. Now he's all the pieces have moved away from the king side, so I just continue the attack. There, there are like seven ways to win now. <laughs> okay, you play queen h5. Makes sense, I guess. Right? F6, knight is coming. Rook is coming too as well. Everything is coming. And once again, this move e5. Yeah, because if he takes, uh, we have f6 here. This. If yeah, let's take a look. If he takes, you play f6. Yep, looks crushing i mean there's not much to talk here yes <laughs> <laughs> so let's see the game this was nice and the second knight, knight is coming yep. queen d8 bishop, bishop d5 knight is made is coming, yeah. and then the knight is going to g6 yeah very nice game okay once again a game from your side aha and here you have a special idea in this position we have already talked about this game and it's White's yes. turn and Black has this quite nice knight on d5 but mm -hmm. there is also this knight which wants to d5, the bishop looks to d5 mm -hmm. and so it's not the best way I suppose to, to trade. Yeah. To trade yeah. And you play this knight. very nice move, knight goes e2. Yeah. So they're basically a kind of uh, I, when I teach it to, teach to my students, they say, imagine the, uh, the, the train arrives at the station and now there are a lot of people want to get in and get out. And that's the D5 score is like the bottleneck. Yeah. That there are so many guys want to get in and get out. Too many uh, pieces. Too many pieces, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you check, uh, 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 I don't know which book exactly, but in one of the uh, Yusupov and uh, the Worski book, mm -hmm. they call it superfluous square. Oh, okay. Superfluous square. That's the word they use. Superfluous in English means extra or excessive. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess super and fluous, just, yeah. But um, I don't know how well the term is explained, uh, explain it, but it makes sense. As you said, there are so many people competing self uh, so from the same team competing for the same square. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to avoid it. In yeah. German, we called it Prinzip der überzähligen Figur. What is what is it? What and there are sound? there are too many pieces want to go to one square. Mm -hmm. So and okay, if I take a look at this yes. position, e4 looks nice, but, but it's a blunder. It's a blunder. Yeah. yeah, then he Just took on c3, and too many black pieces are looking to e4. Yeah, mm -hmm. so knight e2 is nice. Okay, he was playing rook c8, yep. bishop d3, and a5. Yep. Okay, how to continue? And uh, yep, here White plays on the king side, so I went f4, mm. which actually we see the queen on b8, far away from the king. Yep, practically this is a good move. Engines like rook a c1 better, I think. Uh, if you run like modern engines, like today's engines, they say like for example after rook a c1, or not rook a c1 here. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Rook a c1 is what I played in the game. Mm -hmm. Rook c1 is what I played in the game, and my opponent made a mistake after that. Played bishop c6, and after g4, it's game over. Mm -hmm. But e4 right away leads to a, a very good attack. I mean, f4 with e4. So f4, bishop a6 is what you're probably expecting black to play, right? Yes. And then e4, and uh, yeah, this is a this is a very good initiative. Not winning, but a very good attack. Practically, is very difficult to handle. Yes, yeah, exactly. and your, your knight is going to be very strong. Very strong, yes, exactly. Exactly. But in the game, do you want me to say what, how it happened in the game? Of course. So yep. we have this position, and instead of pawn to f4, your move was rook c1? Yeah, so I can explain what happened in my head. Um, 
I thought that he would take, and if it goes on takes, c1, yes, 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 rook c1, and if he and after take rook bishops a6 doesn't work because I can take take it and play queen g3. That was what happened in my head in the game, queen g3, uh -huh. and then I have some pressure in, on the file. But the engine's saying take and rook a8, and nothing happens really. Although I, I have e4, I don't think this is very uncomfortable. I think this is very uncomfortable for black. Or rook a8 right away. Yeah, because if he takes, you have checker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is mate, yes, yes. That, it's that, the problem, that's, so that's yeah, because rook, rook a8, a8, it's fine, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking in the game, take and play e4 and rook c7, but apparently that doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here black is quite okay, yeah? Mm, yeah. A little I mean, bit better I for you, of course, e4 yes. And but engines are not so convinced. So yeah. after rook a c1, though, uh, in the game, lucky me, he played bishop c6. And that's a massive blunder. Okay. And for those who like to check engine analysis, after rook a c1, engine says it's like close to zero. And after it's like it goes crazy for plus five for white. <laughs> okay. And after f4, it's just impossible to stop. f1, f4 now? f4 now, yeah. Okay, and then and f5. I for... play knight e7. And I play g4. Okay. Now you're threatening g5 and he breaks on h7. Yeah. Yep. And then I just went on to win the That's game. That's the end of the e4, story. Yeah. Queen h4, yeah. f5, and that was it. Yeah. So, very nice. But it all starts with this very nice move. So, just remember. How do you call it in English? Superflu is a square. A superflu. Okay. And we will remember. Yeah, and sorry, uh, the point is that I learned this idea and I knew it from a game of Zuckertort against Blackburn from Vienna, 1886. So come to Vienna uh, and, and watch the games and learn chess, yeah. yes. <laughs> was it 86 or 87? There was two. Uh, no idea too old for me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So we have a pawn ending. Okay, and this is chapter two, I suppose. Here you have so, some endings. We covered uh, all kinds of endings, like pawn endings, bishop endings, knight endings, and we try to be practical. Again, this is a training. Uh, we're not. This is not a book specializing the end ending. But we believed that a good player who wants to go to a tournament should have a full um, work on everything, positional understanding calculation and end game so we thought there some end games are needed so we've, we've we included 120 end games oh. covering everything from every aspect without giving a theme but all kinds of ending queen ending bishop ending pawn ending everything so a lot of work for watson a lot of That's work right. for us yeah. but sherlock was happy i suppose yeah i think he was <laughs> happy it's 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 always uh the work is done once the positions are ready for the coach right <laughs> So it's White's turn, and mm -hmm. White is a little bit under pressure. Yep. So, um, yeah, this is uh, it's easy to go wrong uh, in this in this position. Um, yeah. So in the game, I think White just played King e7. Although, but the players made a lot of blunders in this uh, position. But White played. Uh, I think king e7 and king e7 is not a great move because after f5, f5 yes. yeah, the point is if I just try to run to h7, black wins the pawn on f2 and plays g5, f4, and mm -hmm. he's faster. He's faster. She is faster. One tempo. Case, okay. Yeah. So to begin with, the move g4 is very essential. And after. So nothing better than king e2. King e2, yeah. Yes. f4. f4, king f3. King f3, f5, takes, takes. And king e7. Again, king f4, sorry, king, king f4. four. And yes. I have to go for a counter play and here. King e7. Yep. Okay, but if I look at this position, f6 looks so fine for white, isn't it? Yep, it does. Yep. <laughs> but now this is a very typical That's position. Right. No? Yeah. King goes to f5 for g5. It doesn't matter. King e7 and everything looks fine for white. But now comes the hammer with king g6 and it's Zugzwang. Mm -hmm. And white loses the pawn on f6 and the game so you have to play king e7 take take, take h5 h5 and, and uh, now the next move is also nice right. so yeah. yeah so in this position black will win the pawn and we have to come back with the white king to the square, or? square yeah. yeah or on the side basically yep yes 
So we have to play king e7. e7 That's yeah. the important move. And then we can run here. Yep. Or it doesn't matter. We can also run in this way. Yep. So if black plays this move, six, then we yeah. have this. And we are just in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And That's draw. draw. Yep. Nice. But of course, not so easy. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. if you go back for a second, sorry, yeah, this uh, should the, to find g4 should be a process of elimination because yeah. you see king e7 doesn't work. So when when I teach uh, my students, sometimes I say you cannot see the whole line. You even may not have time because it's an end mm -hmm. game. But you should be able to see king e7 is losing, so a pawn move should be included, and that's how you should arrive at the move g4 mm -hmm. in this practical sense. Yeah. So if you are talking about calculation in chess, we have some some ways, and elimination is mm -hmm. in One some percent. position a very good way. When so, are we talking about elimination? When is elimination a fine way? Uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. When, for example, you you are thinking like there's an open file and you see you want to occupy and there are two yeah. rooks and you compare the rook moves for example in the end game elimination is a lot of yeah. time uh, a way to go mm -hmm. because sometimes finding the right idea is not easy yeah um, and sometimes if you have to defend a position and only have two or three moves yeah in finding only moves for example yeah. if, if anything else is losing then you can find for example i remember i once played a very strong move in blitz and people said, that's fantastic defense calculation. I just said, no, I just didn't have any other moves. That's why I played that move. <laughs> that was the only one that wasn't getting checkmated. So Yeah, then then it's easy if we have just one move. Problems yeah. if, if we have a lot of moves. That, that's when, yeah. So yes. elimination in endgame, yes. And this is, once again, a game from Sabina. And it's her turn after Queen H5. Queen yeah. H5. Interesting position, yeah. Would you like to talk a little bit about it? Mm -hmm. Yes, please tell us something. Oh, you, you want to, ah, okay. <laughs> it, uh, it looks fine for white. Okay, I cannot lose. I have a lot of checks, but maybe I have also some mating net. Yep. So uh, one thing is this is a queen ending. And uh, one of the things I keep telling my students is the queen ending quality is more important. Than, and the same as rook ending. Quality is more important than the quantity. This black is up a pawn, but white's pawn, uh, pawns are better. And white queen is more active. So if anybody is playing for a win, that should be white. Yeah. And uh, once you have very well advanced pawns, entering a pawn ending, again, because of the quality, because they are closer. So if you can get closer to promotion, doesn't matter how many pawns your opponent has if you're going to, to be the one who promotes yeah. first. So, so uh, in this position, uh, well, Sabina went for pawn push, but then... She was exposed to many checks and it was time pressure. It moved to 72. Players have been playing already for close to six hours, maybe. Um, so after. She yeah, so the B6, thing is, if the if the black queen starts with check, it's a draw. It's a draw, yes. So we have to find forced moves exactly. and these uh, checks. So we have two checks. Okay, this is not so important, mm -hmm. I suppose. And so I suppose this check. is the best move. And now black has three ways to continue. Yeah, well, he can king, try to run away with the king, but this is always mate. Though. King move is always pawn check and game yeah. over. So let's take I, a look. Yeah, let's yeah, say king g seven. Now you give a check. Yeah, like if king wherever. Okay, I cannot go here. Then I can check and yeah. trade. I mean that's the easiest way. At trade least, huh? the queens and the, and the pawn promotes. Exactly. So what can I do now? Okay, after king f seven, it's mating two. I mean that or that's back it. Back to g six. Then it's again a check. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, and king yeah. h7. S uh, it's, seven. it's the same, I can always exchange queen the queens or queen e7, mates, yeah. yes. Yeah, and queen e8 again. And this here it's mate, mate yeah. yes, and after king g6, we can yep. change the queens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to play um, queen e8. Yep, queen e8. And then queen d6 check. Obviously, it's too early to trade the queens. Yes. And if the no, king... queen e7, no? Yeah. So if the king moves now, the pawns... I can't play e6 now. There's no queen on h5 to give me a check. Yeah. So that's, very, that's a very important addition. The black queen is too passive now, yeah. Yeah. And the pawn on e6, then I'm winning. So e6, then f6, mm. and that's it. And that's the whole point about quality, right? Our yeah. pawns are way too advanced. So queen has to go to e7, but... This looks quite okay for black. 
Unless. <laughs> or, not, or not. Or not, yeah. Okay, there are these pawn endings now. Yep. And we have uh, this very nice, nice move. F6. F6, yeah. Black has to take, we take. And now this is winning. In German, we call this wanderndes Quadrat. Okay, it's also from Tworetsky. Yeah. Is there a term in English? Uh, what do you call it again in German? Wanderndes Quadrat. Wanderndes Quadrat. Yeah. So if we, if we touch... Quadrat is like a is, square? Yeah. So, the so this square position is, is always winning, yes. So yeah. problem is Zugzwang, oh? because yes. if I play king e8, I, king I don't here. have a move with the pawn, but I just can bring my king. Ah, e, f, f3, oh. I'm just e3 f3. or f3. If e3, you just go okay. to e6, because they are so advanced that black doesn't have any counter play. Ah, yeah, okay. So he's not in time. b5 and king d5. And we are too fast. c2 and then f7, yeah. And, and I mate. promote to it, yeah. This is nice, yes. Oh, this was the game, yes, and... Yeah, this was the, yeah. This F6 move, in. this is really nice. Yeah. This is beautiful, yep. Okay, and also a game from Sabina. Yep, um, so after bishop h7, uh, this is, I think, is a lesson, in, again, knowing the classics of the end game. Like, in this position, if white's king make it to d4, because it controls yeah. the d3 score, is a draw. We know, we all know that. And Sabina knew that as well. Uh, just to think she, uh, I mean, in, again, players have less than a minute, both of them in this position. Uh, what we sometimes forget in chess, and it's a very weird contra contradiction, is the shortest path is not always a straight line. Mm -hmm. So some people say, okay, play king f4, king g5, king, e king d4, but obviously king f4, e3, if, if white plays king f4, e3, um, and if I go king e5, I am one tempo short because black plays bishop d3, yes. and this is game over. But the shortest path is to win a tempo with king h6. That's a brilliant move. And uh, if black goes back bishop f5, I go king g5. So, and now um, if the. Let's go back again. Or? If the bishop leaves a diagonal, let's say it goes to h3. Yes. So let's say C8. here, yeah. Yeah, now I go king f6, king f4, sorry, king f4. King f4, sorry, yeah. king f4, e3, and no. king, king e5, e4, e4 too, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we are, and now we can. And then after go whatever, to d4. yeah, and we go there, and that's it. We are we are, we are in the position. Yeah. And this is a draw. Um, And if bishop g8 now, we keep chasing the tempo. Bishop king g5. G7, sorry. King G7, I, I keep saying the so? right, yes. right, not wrong number. Yet. We are taking the bishop and then we are going to D4. Yeah. Uh, this is like the famous uh, Reti position, right? Yeah, the idea is the same. It's the same. Yeah. Two yeah. threats. Yeah, I mean, two threats, yes. Yeah. Two threats in the end game. Yeah. Bishop B3, King F6, E3, King there, and then again he doesn't, King E5, yes, exactly. And now bishop we are just seven. in time. Just in time, And yes. black cannot play bishop the bishop to d3 yes uh -huh. so just remember these tricks uh -huh. <laughs> nice end game yes yep. so and one of your games exactly but so, bad luck for you bad yeah so this one um miscalculation right after time pressure and uh, yeah black has it's a draw of, i mean black is very active but he has practical problems and this is about, again, being tactically alert to in the endgame. I forgot about the mating net. So I played knight e5, walked into a mating net. Uh -huh, after. I mean, I just forgot that uh, this rook, rook, rook h7, uh, I, I, my king cannot go to e6. Like, completely, when I played rook h7, I was like, wait, this is mate, actually, because I don't have king e6. For some reason, I thought I have the move king e6. Mm -hmm. So it's a very important thing to always be sharp <coughs> at any stage of a game, any time. So rook b8 obviously, like, this is also again if you see the move knight e5 losing rook b8 becomes only the only move, move for, process yeah. of elimination exactly. Yeah, you need to check on g8. So if knight h5 rook g8 knight e5 is good enough. So check. let's take a look. You give check, and now you're very active. Yes. And then yeah, knight g7 check, king g6, knight e6, d3. We give up the pawn, but 
knight f4 check, king f5, knight takes d3, takes, takes, and this is very active, should be a draw. Even d4 yes. is, d4 must be good. Mm -hmm. King f4. King f4, yeah. Trade, yeah. Seems to be okay. So, but the Practical big question problem. is if Let's I take the knight, huh? Exactly, exactly. So you give check. Uh -huh. Well, that's a must. King, king goes f2. back, uh -huh. you take. Takes. Takes. And king, king must go back to e5. e5 and rook h6. h6, okay. Yep. Here we are. And this is the key moment that I uh, got a little bit shaky again in my calculation. I saw d3, and I saw that d3 ed should be a draw. Because yeah, if the pawn takes you have king d4, d4 and active, uh, active again. After e3, looks a little bit scary for your king. Yeah, but then I missed this very beautiful tactic, mm -hmm. which, yeah. Is now your pawn is, very is threatening to promote. Yeah, and it's rook g2 check. Wow. And if he takes the pawn, will be promoted, yeah. Then black wins the game. Yeah. So he has to play king e1. E1, and but okay, after. He's check lucky. It. Yeah, it's a draw. He's lucky, actually, it's a draw. <laughs> it's a draw, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so bad luck, rook b8, and you are in the game. I was uh, very much in the game. <laughs> okay. And this was a game nice. so Nakamura, ah, standard rook end game. It's. Yep. Vetankura? No. Vankura, yes. Va Vankura, Vankura, Vankura yes. yes. Yeah. So we need the black rook on f6. But we have to start with check and have to take this direction. To Isn't be, it? To be on time, yes. yes. Because if the king gets to c4, then we don't have the time. Yes. So we start with check? Yep, that's the finest way. King c3 looks c3 normal. and rook b6. Yeah. And we are in position. Yeah. Okay. a7 is, ne is never such a good idea. The king is very safe on g7, also very safe yes, so, on yep. h7. Seven, yeah. You just play this move, yep. go back, and if the white king goes to b6, you start with checks. So white has to go to c4, and the idea is to go to b7, but now we have these checks from the side. side yes. King b5 and check, and we always give yep. check, 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 check. And, yep. and the moment the king goes down to d3 or something, we go back to f6 attacking the pawn, so white cannot make any progress. Yes, so in, in this position. Just rock back to f6, yeah. King d5 will just wait, king h7 or whatever. Yeah. So standard root, root game, uh, game, but always important to remember these techniques. Exactly. I see you mentioned the move h4 uh, at the beginning. Uh, ah, yeah, here black yes, can uh, also give this pawn and yeah. start with h4, yes. This, uh, in, the, this in, the most, in the most endgame books, they show the position without the extra pawns, mm -hmm. and people forget about that, you know, there is Vancouver position yeah. uh, with or without the pawns on the board, so it can be very confusing. So... I used to teach Vancouver position to my students, but uh, um, but uh, when I show them with a little bit of twist, they completely forget that it's Vancouver. So I thought this is a good example to show you know, in a real game. Sometimes you don't get exactly the same position, but you can get a variation of it, and you have to use your pre-existing endgame knowledge to mm -hmm. use in the game. So Elshan, 10 examples, very nice. It seems to be a very nice book, and I also love Sherlock very much. So it makes a lot of sense to study it, to, yeah, to practice the main ideas. Well, I hope people will really enjoy it. I would love the feedbacks. Uh, and we were th thinking of continuing it in both direction of harder levels for a higher level and the lower level ones for with Sherlock training Watson or someone else. <laughs> um, and we appreciate the feedback so far. People were happy with it. Hopefully it will be more feedbacks because it only helps with, with improving in the future. Fine. Then have a nice time and see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.